Live from KZ12, the night beat starts right now. Shot shaming. It's not something you'd think would happen during this pandemic when it comes to vaccines, but it is. With vaccines being limited and given to those in high risk categories first, some may see it as unfair or be quick to judge. Tonight, the night team's Jeff Gray with the experience one local woman had. She's in a high risk category, and here's what happened after getting her vaccine. They had friends who told them, you know, you don't deserve to get this vaccine right now because you did this to yourself. To me, that just sounds like they're saying you deserve to get sick because you already have a condition. Sarah Lloyd describing private messages she received after posting this Facebook post. In it, she describes the mental struggle she faced when she was deciding whether to get the vaccine. She wrote, quote, I'm eligible because I'm obese, end quote. Lloyd, like many Americans, falls into the obese category, which is considered a qualifying health condition to receive a vaccine. If you're in that population that we know from very early studies seem to get sicker at a higher rate or have a higher risk of dying, then that becomes the population that you want to vaccinate first. Even with that recommendation from medical professionals, Lloyd felt guilty for getting in line. Being otherwise healthy and, and getting the vaccine, I thought, you know, there, there are people who need this more than I do. And, you know, my parents are over 65 and they were going to get the vaccine that same week. And I thought, you know, am I really in the same at risk category as my parents? She realized she wasn't alone in feeling guilty. Will put themselves farther back in line just to avoid that stigma of, you know, I'm taking something that you know, someone else deserves more because they have taken care of themselves. Just because they're having access, it does not mean they're taking the spot of somebody else. The moment that we view it that way is the moment that somebody allows themselves to potentially get angry about it. So for the people who do have these feelings, we need to take a step back in terms of judgment. Clinical psychologist Dr. Lindsay Beera says that includes those who shame others with invisible illnesses. There could be somebody with cancer that can't be seen, with asthma, with a blood blood disorder, or even a first responder, that upon first look, these people look healthy, but we will never know the entire story. Therefore, we have to support. Lloyd, who says she's perfectly fine with being obese, says it was important for her to put her shame aside to protect others. The fact is that this is the body I have right now. This is the body I need to take care of. And I need to get this vaccine to protect myself, to protect my son, to protect my loved ones. She encourages others to do the same. We need to be encouraging each other to get these vaccines, um, not to hold back um, because of any kind of fear or stigma that we have. Now, medical experts believe the cause for the shaming is just a mixture of frustration and panic, as most are trying to get the vaccine for themselves or a loved one. Now, if you do fall into a high risk category or when it is your turn to be eligible to receive the vaccine, health professionals say do not hesitate to do so, even if it is difficult to get a spot in line. Jaffney Gray, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jaffney. San Antonio ISD teachers and staff received doses of the new Johnson & Johnson vaccine this morning. The clinic Stamp Allergy gave out about 100 doses. It is the first step toward getting the nearly 8,000 employees of the district vaccinated. It's something SAISD Superintendent Pedro Martinez says is critical to keeping the virus under control at their schools. Staff who received the vaccine today agree and say they're thankful for the opportunity. This is the right direction for teachers uh, getting the vaccination, coaches getting the vaccination just so we can uh, be allowed to help out more kids. This comes after the Department of State Health Services announced last week that Texas teachers and school and child care staff are eligible to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. And meanwhile, those hoping for to snag an appointment for a vaccination at the Alamo Dome, you'll have to wait just a little bit longer. The city says that all 40,000 spots have been filled. Metro Health opened up registration last night at 6 p.m. They say it took two and a half hours to fill those appointments. There is some good news here, though. There's expected to be 10,000 appointments available each week until April 3rd. 
Per Governor Greg Abbott's order, businesses in the state of Texas are allowed to reopen at 100 percent capacity tomorrow and face masks will no longer be mandated by the state. But a new executive order from Bear County Judge Nelson Wolf seeks to curb that directive. The order requires all commercial businesses to post a health and safety policy in a visible location for employees and visitors. That policy must list any safety requirements being used by that business, including the wearing of face masks. But the order does not say a business must require them. According to this order, if anyone refuses to comply with the policy, it's the business's right to refuse service and call authorities. You can find that full order and more information on this on KSAT.com. As we prepare for the state of Texas to fully reopen tomorrow, it is important to know it's okay to feel anxious. Right now at KSAT.com, you can find a story we aired earlier today about coping with anxiety over re-entering society. It all comes down to what you're comfortable with. There's no magic answer to rid you of the anxiety, but we spoke with a counselor who has a bunch of recommendations that could help you. Again, you can find that story right now on our homepage at KSAT.com. If parenting wasn't difficult enough, the pandemic certainly has not made things any easier. From remote learning to a total upheaval in our routines, doing your best to keep your kids engaged but safe, parents are dealing with a lot right now. That's why I'm hosting our second Parenting in a Pandemic live stream. I'll be joined by a panel of professionals to tackle important issues like your child's mental health, your own mental health, tech addiction, and your own self-care while trying to balance it all. And as we prepare for this live stream, we want to know what questions you want answered. Look for the Parenting in a Pandemic story on KSAT.com. You can submit your questions right there. Then tune in on March 16th, next Tuesday at 2 p.m. on KSAT.com or the KSAT TV app. Let's take a look at the latest COVID-19 numbers here for Bear County. Mayor Ron Nuremberg today announcing 171 new cases and six new deaths. Meanwhile, hospital numbers continue to look much better. As of tonight, there are 262 people hospitalized with 120 in the ICU and 76 on ventilators. The mayor noting this is the lowest number of hospitalizations we've seen since early November. Crooks targeting catalytic converters. The pollution control device is found underneath your car. So why would a thief want it? Well, it's made out of precious metals and thieves can cash in thousands for it. The night team's Patty Santos with how you can protect yourself from becoming the victim of a pricey crime. It's tonight's Crime Fighters report. It sounded like it needed a new muffler or something. It was like a very loud motorcycle. A mechanic soon told Alan Peel why his Prius was making that noise. It sounds like you have uh, had your catalytic converter stolen, uh, which is a common thing. And he's right. Peel isn't alone. In Kerrville, police are trying to identify these suspects who may be linked to a string of thefts. They've struck commercial parking lots for commercial vehicles like delivery trucks. They've struck uh, apartment complexes. They've struck residential areas in neighborhoods. There's been eight thefts reported since the start of the year. We encourage vehicle owners to engrave their VIN, vehicle identification number, onto the catalytic converter. Um, to give a scrap dealer the means to verify whether or not they're actually receiving stolen property. Police say park in well-lit areas and set your alarm to sensitive mode. Peel's comprehensive insurance covered the replacement, but he was warned. You can expect the crooks to come back to your driveway uh, after a couple of weeks to see if you've uh, had it repaired because they'll just go ahead and steal it again. That's why Joseph Brodnick says his company was born in 2019. Owner of our company designed this plate, uh, the Generation 2 Prius plate. It's a plate that covers the catalytic converter. One of their customers caught its effectiveness on camera. This suspect walks away from a vehicle with a cover and goes after another one instead. It's off in about a minute. He says in Texas, the demand for protection is growing. In the upper parts of Texas, it's the Prius and the Element. In southern Texas, we're seeing a lot of requests for trucks. The plates cost under $200 plus another $100 or so to have it installed by a mechanic. I feel a lot more secure now that, that it's on there. Peel is how we found out about these protective devices, and police say there are others on the market and they're worth looking into. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. 
To some updates now, following the siege of the U.S. Capitol back in January, a San Antonio area man now facing charges for his role. 46-year-old Trennis Jewel Evans III arrested at his home in Canyon Lake on Friday. He's accused of climbing through a broken window of the U.S. Capitol on January 6th and taking shots of whiskey in House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's office. The FBI says investigators were tipped off days after the siege by an acquaintance of Evans' family. And then days after that, the FBI was given a link to a video on Facebook with a man who matched Evans' description. Evans is now charged with obstruction of justice, violent entry, and disorderly conduct on Capitol grounds, and knowingly entering or remaining in a restricted building. Still ahead on the night beat, the House planning to vote on President Biden's nearly $2 trillion COVID relief package tomorrow morning. This as the CDC issues new guidance on wearing masks. The latest on all that next. Tonight, the latest in the fight to vaccinate Americans. The House expected to take up President Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID relief package in just a few hours. Meantime, more states are lifting COVID restrictions as health officials keep urging caution. ABC's Ike Ijanchi is in Washington with the very latest. Tonight, a sign of hope for those who've been fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Looking forward to being out and seeing people and being around people again without having a mask on. It's, it'll be weird, too. The CDC issuing new guidelines saying fully vaccinated people can gather in small groups indoors without wearing masks. Meantime, the House planning a vote on President Biden's nearly $2 trillion relief package Wednesday morning. It is so exciting, as you know, because of what it does. Vaccine, vaccines in the arms of the American people, money in their pockets, children safely in school, workers safely back to work. All across the country, mass vaccination sites are opening like this one in Seattle and another at the Motor Speedway in New Hampshire. But health experts warn some activities like travel are still risky. We know that um, many of our variants have emerged our, uh, from uh, international places and we know that the travel corridor is a place where people are mixing a lot. The CDC also saying those who are vaccinated still need to wear masks in public to protect those who aren't vaccinated or who might have underlying conditions. It's a guideline coming as several states are actively rolling back restrictions. Wyoming becoming the sixth state to lift their mask mandate, joining 11 other states with no mask mandates. Two more states are also planning to lift restrictions next month. And as spring looms, so do those looking to take advantage. In Texas, dozens flocking to beaches in South Padre Island, ignoring CDC guidelines. Texas is one of the states planning to lift its mask mandate starting Wednesday. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Washington. Meantime, around Texas, Governor Greg Abbott taking aim at President Joe Biden today, alleging his administration's border policies are causing a spike in illegal crossings, in some cases led by drug runners. He does not care about Americans. He cares more about people who are not from this country. I need the Biden administration to step up and start providing the safety and security that Texans and Americans deserve. Abbott claims cartels are taking advantage of overwhelmed border patrol to bring across drugs and other dangerous elements. The governor added that Texas will use every tool or strategy the state can to arrest anyone who crosses the border illegally. Taking a live look outside with live cam on the second day of spring break. A beautiful shot there of uh, the downtown. Yeah, the Alamo Dome. Yeah, the Alamo Dome. Sorry, breaking up there a little bit. <laughs> beautiful day if you like wind, humidity, and clouds. <laughs> you know, there's something for everybody around here. Right, there Sarah? There was. There was something for everybody. We had uh, even some fog this morning. So cloudy start, very windy conditions. We saw wind gusts of up to 30 miles per hour locally and even up to 35 miles per hour in the hill country. And looking out at the skyline right now, uh, it is a quiet evening, but we are seeing some of those winds still sticking around. 77 was the high temperature today, 5 degrees above average. We have gotten up into the 90s this time of year and some of our viewing area, especially toward uh, south along 
uh, I-35 could actually see 90 degrees uh, tomorrow. Our, our low this morning was 58 degrees. Meanwhile, right now it's 65 here in San Antonio, so our temperatures have only gone down about 12 degrees. And one of the reasons for that is the winds, are the winds rather. The winds are still very strong, especially for this time of the day. We're seeing winds from the southeast at 15 to 20 miles per hour with gusts of up to 30 miles per hour in some places, a 29 mile per hour gust in Hondo at the airport, a 26 mile per hour wind gust. And, and unfortunately, if you don't like the wind, we're going to continue to see windy conditions through the end of the week. This is a look at the wind gust forecast, and you can see that well, every day we'll have wind gusts of at least 25 miles per hour, perhaps up to 30 miles per hour, and the wind direction is key here. The winds are going to continue to move in from the southeast, tapping into that Gulf of Mexico moisture. And so st slowly but surely we are going to steadily see the humidity continue to rise. So how we'll start the day tomorrow uh, is with cloud cover, as you can see in the future cast here. Now we will not have as much fog as we had this morning because the winds are going to stay pretty steady and mix up the atmosphere and prevent fog from developing. But we still could have a few patchy sprinkles out there tomorrow and then into the afternoon. As you can see, we'll have a few peaks of sunshine locally. Notice that along 35 South toward Catula, even out toward Eagle Pass, it's going to clear a lot quicker than it will here in San Antonio. And those areas are going to be the warmest spots in our KSAT 12 viewing area. Carrizo Springs, a high temperature of 85 tomorrow. Cachula, 90 degrees. Laredo, 90 degrees. Meanwhile, it'll be 82 in Del Rio and 80 around San Antonio and out to the east as well. And then up in the hill country, temperatures will likely get up to the low to mid 70s. Uh, so it is going to be warmer than it was today because we'll have a few more peaks of sunshine in the afternoon. All right, let's talk about what everybody wants to talk about rain chances because we're under drought conditions now. Uh, this activity that's happening in parts of New Mexico and Colorado is going to continue to head up to the north and miss Texas. However, look at San Francisco. You see all the rain they're getting there. This is around an upper level low pressure system. This is our next rainmaker that is going to move closer to us over the next few days. It's going to take its time, but by Saturday night and into Sunday morning, it'll position itself and bring a cold front through San Antonio. It'll be a weak cold front, but a cold front nonetheless. Now, I don't want to scare you by putting severe on the map because this is mainly for the area near Dallas all the way up to Kansas. Those areas have a risk for severe weather with this potent system here in San Antonio. We're going to be on the tail end of things, and so really we'll only have a 60% chance for scattered showers and storms uh, Saturday night into Sunday morning. As we get closer to the weekend, we'll be able to refine the forecast as far as rainfall totals go and which areas have the best chance for rain. But just know that we've all got the best chance in a while for that rain on Saturday night into Sunday. Until then, the weather is going to be pretty mundane every day. We'll have morning clouds, afternoon sun, a few patchy uh, spots of drizzle here and there, and it will be breezy. Pretty spring-like. Yeah, very spring-like indeed. Even the chance for storms in there. All right, thanks, Sarah. Feels like it's been a really long time since the Spurs have played. Well, yeah, for some, it's been almost, what, three weeks now with the All-Star break and the two-week quarantine. When we come back, everybody back to work today, but will everybody play tomorrow night against Dallas as they tip off the second half of their season? And are the Cole Cougars ready to go back to the state championship game? Find out coming up. San Antonio Spurs are in Dallas tonight, ready to tip off their second half of their season tomorrow night against their I-35 rivals. That's after they return to the practice floor today following the All-Star break. Rudy Gay, Derek White, Devin Vassell, along with LaMarcus Aldridge, all back on the floor, even though Vassell be held out of tomorrow's game by head coach Greg Popovich for reconditioning. They're sitting out almost three weeks now due to the health and safety protocols and the All-Star break as well. While Quindary Weatherspoon has been sent to the Austin Spurs, LaMarcus Aldridge is not listed on the Spurs injury report, meaning he's now over his stomach ailment but forcing to miss the last two games. The Spurs were able to win 18 of their first 32 games and are currently sitting in seventh place in the Western Conference. But given the fact the worst part of their schedule lies ahead with 40 games in 68 days, have their expectations changed going forward? I'll say we we're excited. We have very high expectations, you know, trying to make the playoffs day by day, um, game by game, and doing the best that we can. So 
Um, I can see everyone, you know, they're happy to be healthy, happy to, you know, get it going. And I'm just excited for how, how things are going for the Spurs. We're still hungry. We still, uh, we, feel, we still feel like we got something to prove. I think uh, we're going out every day and ready to compete and win. All right, it all resumes tomorrow the way it ended back in March of last year, and then fans are welcomed back to the AT&T Center on Friday. Vanessa Bryan, the winner of NBA superstar Kobe Bryant, has won a ruling from a federal judge that will allow her to learn the names of the four Los Angeles County Sheriff's deputies who allegedly took and shared graphic photos of her husband, daughter Gianna, and seven others killed in a helicopter crash in Southern California last year. That ruling now allows Mrs. Bryan to include the names of the deputies and the findings of an internal investigation in her lawsuit against the county and the Sheriff's Department that is seeking damages for negligence and invasion of privacy. The University of Texas has released a report on their school's song, The Eyes of Texas, and it has found no racist intent. But that said, the president of the university, Jay Hartzell, says athletes and band members will not be required to sing or participate when the school song is played at games and campus events. The 58-page report released today was commissioned last year by Hartzell after a group of Texas athletes, mainly football players, demanded the school drop the song as part of the racial injustice protest. But that demand sparked outrage among donors and alumni after most of the team chose to lead the field rather than join fans after the game and singing the school song. It prompted emails to the school president that threatened to pull financial support if it continued. The 24-person panel that produced the report determined the school song was rooted in accountability and excellence, but also noted the song was first performed by a minstrel show, likely with performers in blackface, but noted the preponderance of research showed had no racist intent. Hartzell has already determined that the school song will continue to be played at games and other events, but added this shortly. Nobody has been or will be required to sing the song that is going to be going forward the way we continue to operate. We hope that as people go through the report, read the facts, they will find ways to participate in some way. Whether it's the case of the athletes standing on the field, or the fans in the stands as we sing, there's going to be no punishment, no mandate, no requirement if people choose not to participate. Les Miles is out as a head coach in Kansas. That decision came just five days after the report was released from his days at LSU, showing that an internal investigation in 2013 a accused Miles of inappropriate behavior toward female students, including allegations he contacted some on social media, text, met them off campus, alone, and kissed at least one of them. The report did not find that he had any sexual relationships with any of his students and that Miles strongly denied he ever kissed a student. Miles had three years left on his five-year contract at Kansas after going LSU, guiding, I should say, LSU to a national championship in 2007. He did release a statement which read in part, this is certainly a difficult day for me and my family. I love this university and the young men in our football program. I've truly enjoyed being the head coach at KU. And now that it is, and I know I should say, that it is a better place now than when we arrive. Can the Cole Cougars get another crack at the state championship game? Next. Cole taking on Little River Academy. Class 3A state semifinals with a chance to play for state this year after they were robbed by the pandemic last year. Cougars taking control early in the first quarter. Silas Livingston to Trey Blackmore for the corner three. Cole goes up 9-6. Then defense turns to offense. Blackmore pokes the ball away, starts a break the other way. He goes coast to coast, finishing with a Euro step lay in. Blackmore had 14 first half points. Cole leads 29 21 at half. And that's got the Cougars fired up because Little River still in this one. Darren Franklin hits this three from the logo at the end of the third quarter. Cougars still lead 40 30. Five, then they pull away. Kelby Beckstrom gets it to fall. Count this and one. Cole wins it 59-50. They're heading to the championship game for the second straight season. Feels great going back to the championship game. We actually get to play it this year. Last year we didn't get to. So proud. I love all of them. I love my guys. I love how we can come through in a tight game like this against a great team. Oh, we work hard all year. We practice every day. Coach did a great job coming up with a game plan with just a few days, and it really showed today. All right, and here's some other games for you tonight. Bernie's season has come to an end. They lose in the state semifinals, 55-49. And Antonia is moving on to play for the state championship game in College Station Friday night at 8 o'clock. We'll be there for that of their victory over Concordia and Lutheran. And the cool thing about the Cole Cougars, they will actually play for the state title on the very day their season was forced to come to an end in the pandemic last year and did not get a chance to play the state championship game. How cool is that? Very yeah. cool. Yeah. They made it all the way back. All the way back. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. Best of luck to them. If you and your family have hope for a trip to the happiest place on Earth, you should know it is reopening sooner rather than later. We'll have some details straight ahead. The happiest place on Earth getting ready to reopen next month. Disney's CEO announcing Disneyland will be open for visitors once again by late April. 
An official date should be announced in the coming weeks. Attendance will initially be limited to 15% capacity. That's according to Orange County's standards. Mickey and all the characters will be happy to see everybody back. <laughs> that does it for the night beat. Don't forget, Good Morning San Antonio starts tomorrow, bright and early at 4.30. Thanks for being with us tonight. Have a good one.